I make and design rare pieces of knitwear. I redesign already existing pieces. So I reinvent. I'll remake collars, I'll make bows, I'll make bustles. Can knitted jackets, there is a reupholstered range, there's a machine knitted range, and I have my blanket wraps that I got the idea for doing in India with the women wearing their saris. I thought I'll make the English version. What became the influence to start creating and making things in your interesting clothes? It was in the 70s, and there were, you remember the midi coats? And um, my friend Deborah Holken, she, I thought she was so gorgeous. Long hair, midi coat, and I really wanted a coat. I really wanted that coat. So I asked Ma, and I said, I really want a coat. And I explained it to her, what it was, where to get it, this, that, and the other. And the big day came, and she bought me a bloody parka. It was that sense of absolute desolation of putting this on. I mean, I looked frumpy, fat. And then I, what happened to me was I understood the power of clothing and how you feel when you're wearing something that you love. I was 13 and I vowed never, ever, that will never happen to me again, never. Set the darkness on fire when you smile when you wear something that you feel that you know who you are it, there's just nothing like it you know and the amount of times i've seen women put something on and fall in love with themselves in the mirror it's just i never tire of that look about that look you think there you go look how beautiful you look color shape texture i joined the merchant navy and I was 16 and I, I had to grow up really quickly because there were three women, maybe 90 men. And um, the purser, Pancho, said to me at one point, he said, don't do this. He said, go, go to college because you're young, go to college. He said, because the people who work on these boats are train crushers. So I auditioned at drama school. And so, yeah, I went to drama school and never went back. I mean, I was a professional performer for about 15 years. I just became this, I just quote things from plays. You know, the line between fantasy and my own reality was very thin. I didn't know who I was. I'm in other people's memories as a performer, but it's not in mine. You know, I've kind of, I don't, I can't remember it really because it's so transient. And I began to draw. Oh my God! Look at what I look at what I'm doing. I'm not actually drawing how I think I'd like to draw, but something's happening. I did a, a collection of series of my pictures of my dad before he died, and there's just like a triptych of my sister looking at my father, thinking what's wrong. Something was terribly wrong, and they thought he had Alzheimer, but he had a secondary cancer, and it sent cancer to the brain. So it sent him a little bit too lally. I was homesick to be by the sea and to be with family and a, having a sense of home. And that was when I had the idea to make the jumpers. And I made a collection of 10 pieces and took them to a shop called Love Grove that was here at the time, which is a fantastic shop that took pieces from artists around the area. Anyway, she rang me about a week later and she said, I've sold all of them. And I had a hundred pounds in my pocket that I'd, I'd found that myself and that's how I started. And it was lovely and it was all going really well. I got a studio, my sister came on board. We were, I, we were really busy, really busy working for shows, lots of money going out. But I took my eye off the ball and I, got myself into a bit of a terrible muddle actually rather than keeping it nice and working well and tight spread it out and lost money and then the guy who was the bookkeeper he wasn't an accountant he was a bookkeeper said you gotta be careful girls because you are going to go under and I did now that really hurt me I I couldn't have any money coming in 
you know, only a certain amount, otherwise the bank would take it. I had to go and declare I was a bankrupt. Oh my God, to walk into a bank and go, my name's Nicola Catherine's, I'm a bankrupt. Uh, but I did it. So yes, yeah, slept for a couple of years. What woke you up? Went to India. I just walking through India. I think for God's sake, for God's sake, these people are beautiful people. And they're so resourceful. And look, they want to share with me the nothing that they have. You know, slept a few nights on the street with them. This beautiful family and a, this little boy, he was covered from top to toe in eczema and he had one flip-flop and it was on the wrong foot. And I thought, I can't bear it. I can't bear it. I said, right, come on, Mary, come on. So I bought him all these little clothes and they were just, it was just that sense of um, inventiveness and strength. I thought, okay, and I could feel there was a gradual coming to as I was walking. It's like coming out of a dream. They are my inspiration. So what am I going to do? Am I going to write a book? Shall I become a Pilates teacher? Shall I start again? This time, I am going to keep it on the kitchen table. I'm going to keep it small and I will say no a lot. Say look at you now. When women come into the studio, it's it's slow shopping. It's about connection. It's about me, and it's about story. And I would say, ninety eight percent of the women who come in are have been beleaguered, are winded by life. They've either become invisible, you know, they don't see themselves anymore. One woman wrote to me a long time ago, and she said. This jacket has changed my life. You think, that's huge. That's an enormous thing to say to me because when she'd come into the studio, her husband had died, she died. She, I don't come with the coat. And she came, in because, she came in because she just happened to be passing. Oh, wow, I like that neckline. And she looked around and she said, would it be all right if I tried one of the jackets? I said, of course, because it's not just about buying stuff. Yeah, try it on. She put it on and I went, oh, for goodness sake. She went, I said, oh my God, so it's beautiful. I said, not only is it beautiful, but the pair of you, there's a lovely, there's a pairing going on and you look beautiful together. Yes, it's round, round the outside. And she remembered that moment as a turning point because she said, I became visible. People smiled at me, touched me, talked to me. Whereas before she was drifting through this, with this grief like a shell. Some women have had uh, double mastectomies, some women have had terrible cancers where they've this missing. And what you get to see in the studio is the rarity of that. So what we're doing is we're dressing sometimes a wound. You know, it's like soft armor. And then they go out there and they become strong. <laughs> I have wonderful women. I've got a hand knitter, a machine knitter, a beader, and a woman who does my velveting and hand sewing, because I sew like a farmer. Maria, oh, for goodness sake, her, she, for me, she's like something out of a fairy story. She has the most delicate hands and the way she beads. And Corinne, we've been together for 13 years. I mean, one coat we've knitted recently, there's over a million hand-turned stitches in it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And my machinist, Chris, they're just, they're just extraordinarily talented women. Yeah, good crew, really good crew. You name all your garments? I do. No, I don't name all of them. Okay, which ones do you name and how do you choose them? I, 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 I name the hand-knitted jackets because I can reproduce them. So we've got, this is Florence, you know, we've got Dottie and we've got um, Sweetie Pie and Pixie, Thelma Pirate. It's, it's, my, it's my root 
You know, it's my foundation. It's my life. It's who I am, you know, and I, I come across myself every day, you know, and it's, it, it gives me such joy. Summarise for me what you create, what you have, what you are. Do you know, I find that question really moving. It's a living thing. You know, what I do is a, is a, it's, it's remarkably alive because I'm alive and I feel very passionate about other, other women, I think, and myself. And I think by doing my work and sharing my work and mentoring, it's, it, that's what it's about for me. It's, it's about demanding, demanding to look beautiful, to be visible, to be clever, to be challenging, you know, to demand that of oneself in one's life. It's an honour for me to, to do what I do, to meet the people I meet. <laughs> uh, that's it. <laughs>